even before our season started in July, back in May, and um, I think there was a few months before that where we all knew we were going to Hawaii. It was like, we, we didn't exactly know what for until Mr. Box told us that it was for the 75th anniversary of Pearl Harbor. It was really, really early on. Uh, we learned it for an entire season in advance. And so everybody was just really, we knew that it was coming and we were really excited. And it was kind of on the back burner for the first season that we knew about it. Um, but then definitely this most recent season, the 2016, um, the entire show was about Pearl Harbor in Hawaii. So um, everybody was really, you know, cause you were constantly immersed in all this information. So you knew that it was just kind of all building up to it. And it was really, really cool. Um, so yeah, I think that definitely having our show be about Hawaii made everyone way more excited. Honestly, I was surprised that not everyone was like totally exhausted because you know like when you wake up from band camp and it's like 7 a.m. and everyone's like, oh, I'm so tired. And you're like, how are you tired? It's 7 a.m. And then we woke up three hours earlier than that. It was like 4 a.m. when we had to be at the airport. And everyone, you could tell they were like obviously excited to go because like everyone was really awake. It was all excitement the whole time. A lot of us slept, but a lot of us were kind of forced awake by the fact that we were going to be there pretty soon. I mean, we knew we were going to Hawaii, but until we got there, it was just like, yeah, I'm on a plane again, and now I'm on another plane, and I'm tired. Our last ride was from San Francisco to Honolulu, and I remember there was this point where I, I had the window seat um, on the plane, and so I looked out the window, and there was just like, this beautiful scene. It was like the water and then you could see the clouds right above it and it kind of like looked like the inverse of a sky because it was like blue with clouds on top instead of like clouds with blue behind them. It, I don't know, it was really cool and I looked out and I took a picture and that's when I kind of felt it. I was like, this is not something I see every day. I've never even been over the Pacific Ocean. Okay. Do you have a food court on the first floor? I think that we got to Hawaii like um, at around seven o'clock um, at night in Hawaii time, but that's like four hours uh, later here in Tennessee time. So it definitely was a really, really long day and everyone was really tired. And there's a Starbucks right in the lobby of the tower where we're going to be staying at too as well. Okay, so stay back. We're about two more minutes away from the hotel and aloha. That's what you're going to wear until we get back here after the performances and after a brief drive through Honolulu and hearing a little bit about it. And your ball caps, yes. Myself and they were like, um, I was getting my suitcase out of the car. All right, who's sleeping with who? I'm fine sleeping wherever. Same. Me too. Are you excited? No. No? Why not? Because I don't know. Okay. I've seen a postcard. Oh. That's enough. My brother's like, <laughs> what about the concert? I don't think they realized the magnitude of what we were doing. Um, I mean, I know I didn't. But because a lot of the time when we play, you go and play somewhere and you don't always realize what you're doing. Nolan, are you excited? No. Before we had played our concert, we were all kind of, we were tired and we didn't want to be in uniform because our uniforms, they're kind of hot and we were all sweating and so it was just kind of miserable and there's a lot of bugs everywhere and we were like, oh, we have to do this. I want to be like hanging out and chilling in Hawaii. Laura, are you excited for the concert? Yes. Are you really? No. <laughs> I think it took a long time for it to hit all of us, like that we were performing not only for ourselves and for the people there, but also in memory of the people in the past. And I think once that kind of clicked, it got a lot bigger of a meaning. Like when we were performing at Pearl Harbor, a woman was pulled up in a wheelchair and you could tell this woman was definitely alive during the time. And you could, while I was standing there performing, I thought, you know, what if this woman was here? What if she had a husband who served here, a boyfriend, a father, an uncle? It's really when it clicked for me at least. Like, this is what we're doing. This is how big this is. It's not just us. It's beyond that. It's not just now. It's beyond that.
Uh, we first performed at the USS Missouri. It, it had such cool historical value because that's where Japan signed the treaty that ended World War II. So we played like we played a military song that had all the different armed forces, their songs and, and the national anthem. And it was really cool because you could like see people who were on the decks and everything who just stopped, you know. Um, we also performed actually at Pearl Harbor. and. Um, we were like where we were positioned, we were looking out on the harbor and it was just, it was really kind of surreal and interesting to think about because we were thinking about, you know, 75 years earlier, right across there, you know, that all this went down and, you know, the stuff that you learn about in history textbooks and it was just, it was really, really cool to finally be there. So I'd been on a couple ships before, I had an idea of what they were like, but I didn't realize the scheme of it all. Like It was huge and it was really, there was, I can't really put words to it because it was more emotional than I had anticipated. Yeah, the USS Missouri, it, you think, like you look at it and it's such a big boat, like we climbed on, on the deck when you're looking around, like all the guns and all the equipment, everything is just so big so big but when you go inside like all the halls and things are super crammed and there's not very many quarters and they're just trying to fit as many things as they can like pack it all in because they need to make room for all the crew members and all the food and there's a lot of supplies that go into it it was um, in commission and it was being used all the way through the Gulf War. But it was really interesting because they had all this, all these displays of like how if you were in the military, like where you would sleep and how you would eat. And it was just definitely really cool to kind of see how those people actually lived on that ship. So that was really awesome. We had about 30 minutes to go explore, maybe 45. And you need like a whole day to really do justice. And the exhibits they have set up inside of it give you such a perspective into the way life was then and the way the war was and just the life of the people on the Missouri. It was incredible. I, I think it surpassed most people's expectations that just, just the trip itself. I didn't really know what to expect. I've never actually like been out of the South. And also I think from like a social standpoint, it was just it was an amazing trip because it allowed all of us, I think, to bond with each other more because we do spend, you know, uh, easily over 100 hours during um, marching band season, you know, all together. And that really like bonds and forms a family. I think the trip wound up being what you made of it. Because there was definitely the opportunity to have such an amazing time, but if you didn't take advantage of it, you didn't really get that opportunity. Um, I mean, at least as far as me and the people that I was with, we really took the opportunities that were given to us and really made every moment out of it. And definitely for us, absolutely made up to the hype. It was amazing. The band, okay, I, I, how do I even begin? I think of it as an extended family. These are kids you've spent years with that you've bonded over in kind of your own nerdy sense. Like, hey, you do that, I do that too. And spending so much time together really brings you close to the people around you and they become your friends and they become your family and they're the people you turn to when times get rough. And they're the people you call when things are great because you want to share your life with them. And that's what band does for people. And it shows you that, I mean, you always hear people say it gives you a chance to be part of something greater, but it really does. When you have 130 people working together to produce one outcome, that's a sense of unity you don't really get anywhere else. It gives you this whole group of friends and they're such great people. Like, there's, I mean, no, not everybody's perfect. No, nobody's perfect. And not everybody's gonna be your friend, but you all know each other so well and you get this great connection. And even if you don't like somebody, you have all these experience in com experiences in common. It's just this, fantastic community to be a part of. I couldn't ask for a better organization.